This episode of Subject Found, Episode 8, Quilt Scene, is brought to you by my patrons. There are only two more episodes left of the first season of Subject Found after this one. Patrons will be getting an alternate ending in Episode 10 as well, as part of my Choose Your Adventure approach to this show. If you would like to support the show, you can do so over at patreon.com forward slash Paul Sadie. Thank you and enjoy the episode. But researchers, including ourselves, are very, very closed lip about where we go and what our areas are. Subject Found is a series of found recordings from our extensive private collection. It contains some of the most mysterious and macabre files and recordings ever gathered, and we will release them for your consideration. We do not validate their claims, but we share them to allow you to make up your own mind about who we are as a species and what our collective veritable truth actually is. Subject Found is a bi-weekly audio drama. Each episode is sequential, so if you haven't listened to earlier episodes from this season, we encourage you to do so now so that you don't miss anything. Last episode, Jared's video analyst friend, Lucas, confirmed that the video shot at Shelton High School football game was legitimate. Armed now with print, hair, and video evidence, Jared feels encouraged that he's closer than ever to proving Bigfoot exists. Determined to finish this investigation, Jared is woken in the middle of the night by his estranged wife, Maria, with the disturbing news that she'd been threatened and that Jared's dog, Molly, was killed by unknown assailants. Can you please stop pacing, Jared? Please, sit down. I don't want to. For me, then. You're scaring me. I I don't understand. Why the hell would anyone do something like that? God damn it, she was such a good dog. Why? Jared, what are you involved in? What do you mean? These men, they wanted me to be sure I told you to stop your work. Why? Look at me. Why? What do you know that would cause this? Does it matter? Molly is dead. Peter was threatened. You're being threatened. All of this over some fucking investigation for an animal? Damn it. I'll clean it up. Sit down. No, I've got it. No, please. I need to do something. I I can't just sit here. I need to do something. Poor girl. She didn't deserve this. Come here. Thank you, Maria. For what? For staying. I don't know if I would have done something stupid if you weren't here. Well, that's what we do for each other, isn't it? Plus, what can you do? I have no idea who these guys were. They didn't give me their names. They didn't say if they were acting on their own or if someone sent them. Nothing. I have no idea who they were. You can't go after nameless people, and I don't want you to. Even if you knew who they were. Promise me that, okay? I I need to know who it is. Who's threatening everyone I care about and leaving me harassing phone calls? What do you mean, threatening phone calls? You didn't tell me anything like that. (sighs) It's been happening for a while now. The last time, a few days ago. I didn't tell you about it because I didn't take it seriously. I... I just figured it was a jealous peer. Some amateur trying to intimidate established people to make a name for himself. Not something to lose sleep over. Then I started getting more calls. More hostile calls. What did they say? In the last call? What is going on, Jared? This isn't your father, okay? You can't keep burying these things. Don't. I am not in the mood for that. For what? Reality? Jesus, Jared! Look at everything that's gone on and the toll that it's taken. Friendships, your career, our marriage, having children. When is enough going to be enough? That's not fair. You can't do that. It is never fair with you. Anything you can do 
to avoid having to talk about it or even think about it. I don't need to think about it. I'm sorry. I'm... I'm just stressed about all of this shit. I didn't mean to yell. But please, don't. This has nothing to do with my father. It has everything to do with your father. How long are you going to deny that? Are you going to keep pretending that what he did to your family had no impact on you? Or are you going to finally be honest? That's not right. What he did... Destroyed what... your family. It destroyed your parents' marriage, and it destroyed his life. No, it didn't. We did fine. We all made it out. Mom moved on. I went to high school, got an education, met you. I have a career. A career that you hate, that has worn you out, and has led our marriage in the same direction as your parents' marriage. That's not... You're walking his path, Jared. How can you not see that? Are you kidding me? Don't put that on me. And don't talk about him like that. He was a great man. A man I admired. Stop defending him. You need to recognize what he did and how it impacted you before it's too late. What's that supposed to mean? If you're not going to be honest with yourself, then you, you can't be honest with me. And if you can't be honest with either one of us, where does that leave our marriage? I love you. Why are you talking like this? Sometimes love isn't enough, Jared. How can you say that? I... I thought we... I thought we were going to work on us. I thought you were going to give me a chance. How can I give us a chance if you're not willing to? I told you, Jared. I warned you that all this was only going to get worked on if you did your part. Do you honestly think the only thing I wanted from you was for you to stop chasing around this goddamn animal? Damn it, Jared. I need so much more from you. I'm going to go. Wait, Maria. Maria, come on, don't... I had half a mind to follow her back to her house. It was actually quite difficult not to. Whoever killed Molly could still be there, waiting for Maria to return. Or me. That'd be a way to make sure I stopped my investigation. I should have seen this coming. It's not like things like this haven't happened before. There are divisions within the Bigfoot subculture that are guilty of doing some egregious stuff to other investigators because of their work. What I'm doing has been getting attention for years, but lately it seems to have been ratcheted up a few thousand notches. And now everyone but me was paying for it. What I do to get my hands on them. I'm afraid of me if I do. There's just no telling. Maria made it home safe. She called to let me know, but didn't want to talk longer than she needed to. I screwed it up this time. I have got to face the facts. My reasons for doing this. I've stuffed it for so long, I don't even recognize it anymore. Maybe telling you, sharing it relatively anonymously like this, maybe that'll help. Just saying it out loud into a recording that may or may not ever see the light of day. Maybe that'll be enough practice to someday look her in the eyes and say it to her. She doesn't need that, honestly, I don't think. She just needs me to admit it to myself and start working on it. If it's not too late. So I guess this makes it confession time for me. Just you and me, me exposing my darkest secrets to you. So here it is, me coming clean. In an earlier recording, I shared my childhood story about a Sasquatch invading our camp, traumatizing my mother and ultimately killing my dog. I said that was my motivation that launched this career, this passion. Well, that wasn't exactly a lie, but it's not the entire truth either. My dog was killed by a Sasquatch. I saw it with my own eyes. 
but that's not where that story ended. After that night, nothing was the same for any of us. You know, if I'm going to do this, I need a beer. I'll never forget the sight of that creature. It was terrifying. As much as I want to prove these things exist, I have no desire to really come that close to one again. Doesn't make sense, I, I know, but you're going to have to go with me on this. Unless you're itching to get into this line of work, then you'll understand. I can see that thing just as clearly now as I could then. As if the past 30 plus years have been a blip. Everything I said before was accurate. The Sasquatch invaded our camp and was chased off by my dog, who was killed. And my mother and father fought about it for days afterwards. All of that was real. Every single bit of it. But that night, the fallout from what happened, it didn't dissipate when we pulled out of that campground. And I'm not talking mourning for a dead dog. Sure, it hurt, and I missed him for a few months. But I was a kid, easily distracted by bikes and sports, and, and soon enough, girls. No, it was my father. He is the reason I've spent my entire adult life chasing this creature. Things didn't return to normal when we got back to Seattle. They didn't suddenly fix themselves when I went back to school and my parents went back to work. My dad changed after that night. He started doing a lot of reading, a lot of research. He started buying equipment and going out on expeditions with local cryptozoologists. Then, when they weren't dedicated enough, he started his own organization. It's defunct now. It died away when he did, but he put a lot into it. A lot more than he put into us. When things started falling apart, he started drinking. Then came the fighting, then came the divorce. Didn't happen overnight, but sure seemed to. One day we were a happy family. The next, my father was never around, and when he was, he was distracted by his research, his liquor, or fighting with my mother. Asshole. He died in 1988. Cirrhosis of the liver. Mom hung around for him, though. Never left his side once he got sick. She was so damn faithful to him. Better than he deserved. I spent all my teen years without a father. It made me angry, and <laughs> man, did I give my mother headaches. She put up with a lot. I don't know how she did it, if I'm being completely honest. Between his selfish dedication to my rebelliousness, that woman had more than her fair share of struggles. It wasn't until Maria came into my life that I even began to take time to think about my father in a different way. Maybe it was because his memory was fading or because I was actually growing up and had my own life to live and adult responsibilities to distract me. I'm not sure. I just know that when I started being less angry with him for everything he did to destroy my family, I also probably didn't hurt that I started walking in his steps. I started repeating his mistakes, which made it easier to justify everything he did to pull us apart and to not be mad at his memory. I'm no better than him. I'm destroying my life to find a creature that doesn't want to be found. It's been a few days since I last recorded. Marie asked me to give her some space, so we haven't been talking. She's in Port Angeles with her family, and I buried Molly. That was hard. 
I haven't been contacted by whoever killed her. They're so interested in convincing me to give up this pursuit, yet there's no direct contact with me from their end. I sat around the house for two days before getting nothing done finally drove me crazy. I called Lucas, my video analyst friend, and asked him to go on an overnight expedition with me. He accepted. Yeah, but I'm not crazy about this. It's freaking cold. It's only going to get colder, buddy. Just wait till about 3 a.m. You'll be ready to sleep in your car with the heater cranked. Remind me again why I agreed to this? Because you're a friend and you knew I need good company? Yeah, well, remind me not to do that again. Man, it gets creepy out here at night. What are you worried about? You don't believe in Bigfoot. You've got nothing to fear. Yeah, well, I am worried about bears and wolves. <laughs> you really need to read a little more about the area of the country you live in. There aren't any bears or wolves here. I watch and analyze videos all day, every day. I don't think I even remember how to read. That would explain so much. Seriously, it's creepy out here. I don't know how you do this. You get used to it. Stop talking for a second and just listen. See? Isn't it peaceful? Calming? Being out in the middle of the wilderness in the dark where predators can see me and I can't see them is not calming, you twisted ass. <laughs> Still, it's good to get away and have a few beers with you. It's been a long time. It has. Don't worry. There'll be a lot more of that soon. After all, this is over. Determined to press on, huh? Don't know right now. I don't really want to think about it tonight, to be honest. It's all good, bud. I just like hearing the sound of my own voice when I'm freaked out. I probably won't shut up all night. I'm going to make a hardened hunter out of you yet. And what makes it so... What the hell was that? Shh. Quiet. We've got company. That's not funny, Jared. I'm not kidding. Shut the hell up. That's Sasquatch. At least two of them. Jesus. What the hell was that? Bigfoot. That one came from over there. That's not where either of the wood knocks came from. And? What's that mean? There's at least three of them out there. I think they're trying to surround me. <laughs> Man, I, uh, uh, are we, are we safe? I, I, I can't just... Sit down and sit. stay by the fire. We're not going anywhere. Just There's no place think. safer than where we are right now. Shit! Don't move! What? Who threw that? Jared, are they throwing rocks at us? It's an intimidation behavior. A number of primates do it, Bigfoot included. I don't think they like us being here. The truck! We can get We're to the truck! We're not going anywhere. We can't go on a three-mile hike in the dark. We're blind out there. <laughs> Calm down. They're not going to bother us if we don't do anything to threaten them. They're still a good distance away, so let's not give them a reason to come closer. We're on their land, and they're probably just checking us out, making sure we don't pose some sort of threat to their herd or nest. They... Oh, oh, oh my God, do... what's that? Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, that's horrible. It smells like something died. Oh, what's up with that look? He's here. Bigfoot is here. What? 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 Where? He's close, Lucas. Don't move. Whatever you do, do not move. What was that? He's right outside the camp. Probably just beyond the firelight. We can smell him because they've got well-developed apocrine sweat glands. 
They excrete heavily when the Sasquatch is scared or threatened. Stay right there. Don't move. What are you doing? I'm getting ready for him if he comes out of those trees. You're going to shoot it? Lucas, Bigfoot are wild animals. I'm not taking any chances. Can't you yell at it or wait fire at it? Doesn't that scare bears? This isn't a damn bear. Sasquatch are intelligent creatures, very intelligent. They don't fall for crude tactics. If he comes through those trees, I'm shooting. Just be ready. For what? Oh my god! Shh. Damn it! Do me a favor. Try to listen for his movements. Help me track him. Jesus! He's leaving. Stay still. Let's give him a chance to find something else to distract him. Oh my god. I, uh, I can't believe this. We're going to need to take turns on watch tonight, just in case. Don't worry about that. I'm not going to be able to sleep at all. I don't know how or why you do this. Are you sure we can't make it back to the truck? <clears throat> hmm. No, we're not trying that. Too dangerous. And away from the firelight, they may not be so averse to inspecting us a little more closely. Get some sleep. First light is going to come early, and when it does, we're out of here. Sounds good to me. Thank you for downloading and listening to Episode 8, Quill Scene, of Subject Found. Uh, the last few weeks have been absolutely amazing and humbling. The downloads are skyrocketing to levels they've never been before. The show breaks its own record of downloads each and every month. The number of iTunes reviews and Stitcher reviews that are coming in, the feedback, the emails, the Patreon messages, all of these things are positive indicators of the direction of the show. You all humble me. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to let me know that I'm not shouting into the void and that uh, the show is out there and that you're really enjoying it. I humbly, humbly want to let you know that it means a lot to me to hear from you all. Having said that, if you do enjoy the show, please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Paul Sading. The level of your donation is at your election. The monthly limit is your election. I just appreciate the support. All of the money that I make from this show gets funneled right back into this show, whether it's purchasing sound effects uh, or buying the music. And folks, honestly, I want to be able to pay actors in season two. You can help me do that. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Paul Sadin. Uh, check out the levels and consider starting out even at whatever lower level. doesn't matter. Maybe I'll make you fall in love with me. <laughs> and we can reach those higher levels uh, to for me to start working on this third audio drama that I'm going to do. Remember, if you are a patron, you get all short stories and alternate endings and exclusive episodes for free. Uh, all short stories. Otherwise, I will put out on the uh, website foundstories.com forward slash store for purchase for the general public. So having said all that, I'd like to actually get to uh, some of those administrative notes that I wanted to hit on. The first thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, if you can't support on Patreon, I get that. Um, but you can help the show by telling your friends about it, Facebooking about it, retweeting it, Tumblr, getting on Tumblr, or Reddit and talking to the community at large about this show and letting them know that you don't have to be a Bigfoot geek like me to actually enjoy the story. Again, for me, the story is more about the characters and their lives and their struggles than it is about the monster. And I hope that's coming through this season. But you, those reviews that you leave, uh, we saw a distinct growth of the show in iTunes over this uh, past two weeks since the last episode. And I want to thank everyone who left the review including Oli Ghost, Conrad1019, Davey38857, SpikeOMC, and Kelsey 
Rolinicki, by the way, from Germany. So a new international review. I love those things. Holy Ghost mentions that it's a five star, loving it. And they say that they're super obsessive of their own interests. Can totally relate to Jared and his search. And they keep coming back to hear how it's going to go and what's going to happen. Thank you, Ole Ghost. Conrad1019 hooked and finished it in two days. And this is one of the the uh, cutest reviews I've ever read. <laughs> Listens in uh, his car and found himself not wanting to get out of the car and got so into it started talking back to the characters. Conrad, that's awesome. Uh, Conrad also wants us to make a movie. Conrad, hook me up with some folks in Hollywood and I'll get working on that right away. I will quit my job tomorrow. Davey, 38857. I love this podcast. I cannot wait to see how this season ends and what's on tap for next season. Uh, This season's ending, I'm very pleased with. Brian Bristol, the producer, did an absolute beautiful job like he always does of creating an auditory environment submersive environment in in the uh finale just like he does with every episode and you're gonna love it patrons of course you get two different endings you check check out which one you want or both Uh, but both of them are equally um enthralling and i know what happens as far as next season uh I'll talk about that actually at the end of this, so I'm glad you made me think about that, Davey. Spike OMC says, great production, solid voice acting, and intriguing storyline. Everything you need in a great podcast. Well done. And lastly, Kessie talks about enjoying the podcast, even though she's not a Bigfoot geek, which how can you not be, Kessie? And by the way, folks, Kessie is the artist uh, who created that wonderful artwork that you see in your feed or on uh, the website, both of those, the AVI that I use and that background with the pin board with all the newspaper articles. That's all Kessie's work. Very wonderful stuff. Kessie says, if you like Bigfoot or any other beasts that are shrouded in myth, absolutely check out this audio drama. So everyone, to every single one of you, wholeheartedly, I thank you uh, for those comments that that you left those ratings that you left all of those things really helped push this show this past two weeks and it was it was just awesome to watch so i with davy's comment i mentioned uh season two season two writing is done the editing the rough editing is done i make sure i go look for you know big holes in the in the plot and in the story arc and things like that and i'm very pleased with where it's at now as of the time of the recording, at the end of January 2017, the scripts, a few of the scripts are off to some beta readers, Alexandra down in Australia, and the ladies over at the Spirits podcast. If you haven't checked their show out, please do. It's an, it's a, They're very entertaining hosts, and they talk about a lot of this stuff uh, from a more nonfiction perspective that this show hits on. So you may really, really enjoy uh, their their topics and their delivery. They're just really awesome folks over there. The wonderful thing about all three of these ladies is that they are taking the time, the precious time that they do have, out to go through those scripts and give me some feedback on them. And the reason why is, uh, you will, as you will see in the season, is it's a very female-centric, character-driven story. And uh, I want to make sure I do it justice because it's a it was a fun story to write it really was totally ended up not where i expected it to end up which means good stuff is ahead for you in season two of this show i'm also just starting to outline season three of the show uh, it's it's very very early in its development We're embryonic stages right now so the plan is at least three seasons of Subject Found. All of that will depend on you all. Keep downloading, keep telling your friends, keep rating and reviewing, reviewing it, and those of you who can uh, become patrons, becoming patrons of the show, it helps me reinvest, helps me steal time away from other things to work on these shows, including if I if I can get to that point, I want to be able to start working on that third audio drama. 
So that's all the administrative things. Let's get to the show credit. Subject Found is the Paul Stadium production in association with the Crafter Studios. This episode was written and edited by me, Paul Sadie, and produced by Brian Bristol. I want to thank you for downloading episode 8, and uh, I want to make sure that you join us for the penultimate episode of the first season in two weeks' time. I cannot believe we're that close. Now, this was the last episode before that Choose Your Adventure element of the season launches. After the next episode, patrons will get to choose which story arc they would like to follow to the season's conclusion. So head on over to that patreon.com forward slash Paul Sading link if you want to become a patron and take advantage of that. If you have sightings that you would like to report, email us at foundtapespodcast at gmail.com and we'll get them into Jared's hands. You can find more information about the show, a mailing list to get on, uh, ways to subscribe, all those good things over at foundstories.com. John McLean is Jared Strong. You can find more of John's work over at jmacvo.com, J-M-A-C-V-O.com, and at dogandponystudios.net. Maria Strong is played by Heather Auden. And Pete Lutz of Narada Radio is Lucas Thompson. You can find more of Pete over at naradaradio.libson.com. I will put those links in the show notes just in case you're looking for the spelling of those. Music in this episode was created by Yin vs. Yang, Simon Croft, and Chris Collins. You can find more of Simon over at soundcloud.com forward slash Simon Croft Music. Chris Collins can be found at indiemusicbox.com, and Yin vs. Yang is at soundcloud.com forward slash Yin vs. Yang. Lastly, go over to that website, find that information, and always remember, until next episode... All that is lost must be found. All quotes that you hear at the beginning of each episode are provided by Steve Mojo Wilkins of the Washington Sasquatch Research Team. You can find more of Steve's work over at WASRT.net. And I would like to thank Steve for his time on educating me on what it's like to find Bigfoot.